misdiagnosis. So now, if you got a bogus HIV test and you were healthy, you could be put in the AIDS category. So now you don't even need those diseases. Okay, now... Now, getting a test, they'd put you in it. Yeah, and the test is inaccurate, the HIV test. So let's say you tested positive for HIV, and I'm going to show you how accurate each of the HIV tests, even if you were healthy, you were put in that category. Okay, I know it's kind of like magic, Johnson. He's got better footwork than that. I know, I know. Well, that's one of the things that they said. Well, I'll tell you the, H, the AZT joke, okay, which is really bad taste, but it's funny. Um, by 1997, the healthy AIDS group, this is, means that you tested positive on a test that's not accurate, you're put in this group, accounted for two-thirds of the AIDS cases in America. Um, now that was in 1997, that's also the last year that the CDC reported this. So the CDC reported it inaccurately, or it doesn't even report those numbers, because they were having a challenge with that. In Africa, HIV status is irrelevant. They don't even test. Um, because in Ghana, when they tested it, 59% of the AIDS cases that they had were seronegative. And that's out of the Lancet 1992. Um, across Africa, all these different Ivory Coast, um, Zambia, Zaire, all of them, 50% of the patients were HIV negative. So now these are the patients who had the coughing, the itching, the fever, the dysentery that are in that category. Now remember, the reason I started this talk is because I'm looking at these clinics that cured these patients. So there is a cure, well not cure, there is a way to get patients who have a number of different symptoms to no symptoms at all and healthy and back and productive. So now here, HIV antibody tests. They don't actually diagnose an HIV infection because there's no HIV virus. Okay, it's, what they're looking for is blood proteins, antibody reactions to specific blood proteins. Now these tests are in fact so nonspecific that they cross-react with nearly 70 other documented conditions. So you can have one of over 70 conditions and still get an HIV positive test. No HIV test can actually find HIV. Okay, I know, I know. Um, now, now this, this is why. Now, this is out of the Journal of Biotechnology. The last one is the most important. We conclude, and this was a huge, huge journal article, that the use of HIV antibodies test as a diagnostic or epidemiologic tool for HIV infection needs to be reappraised. It means it doesn't work. The reason is all of the HIV tests are not standardized, the tests are not reproducible, which means if you get a positive HIV test in Newport Beach, you could have a negative one in Santa Ana, and a positive one in Burbank, and a negative one in Valencia, and just keep working your way up the coast, and then you can maybe get the average. Okay, the Western blot, which is one of the ultimate standard tests, um, it's, it's looking for the HIV genome and may in fact represent normal cellular proteins. Uh, now these are all of the tests that you can take to find out if you're, if you're HIV positive. Now the ELISA, 51% are false positives. So this means if you get a positive test over half of the time it's not, it has nothing to do with it. The Western blot, 96% false positive, and that's the definitive test that we use in this country. Um, uh, you know, target, sud, sero, hemo, it, that's uh, blood, saliva, urine. Uh, it's, it's not accurate, but let me explain why it's not accurate. First off, to find a virus. Now this was first done with, with um, mouse mammillary tumors in the 60s. What they had to do is identify a virus. Now in the old days, what they would do, they would take a sick animal, um, scrape the pus out of a wound, try and grow it, and inject that growth medium into another healthy animal and produce the same disease. Okay, that's, that's coach's postulate, what we try to do. Well now in the 60s we came up with these electron microscopes so we had to isolate the virus and, to, and this is more scientific. So what you do is you take a group of cells that are infected and you put it in a centrifuge and the centrifuge spins it around then you have a sucrose density gradient, which is what's, what's there, it's going to filter through. So you're going to separate these cells, so you separate the viruses 
okay, because they're even smaller than the cells. You separate these virus particles, okay, onto a sheet, and then you look at them with an ed with an electron microscope. Now, this is what a normal viral isolate are. These giant white spots there aren't cells. Those are just spaces. What you're looking at are the virus particles. Now, do those look about the same shape and size? Yeah, so now this is a very accurate viral isolate where we're isolating the virus away. Okay, and this, this is... And this was first done in the 60s with mouse mammillary tumors. So this is a good viral isolate. Now, since um, AIDS is, you know, 48 different diseases, um, the HIV test is completely inaccurate. The patient one, the first patient actually uh, diagnosed with this. Now, this is kind of interesting. All of the tests, the Western blot, the ELISA test, are based on cells that they got from the very first patient who had AIDS. He's called patient one. Now, um, his history is different, okay? He was a gay man, but he, he wasn't a healthy person. In fact, patient one, the person who you got these cell cultures originally from that all the tests are based on, he actually had two cases of gonorrhea, stage four syphilis, which means he had rubbery, rubbery nodes, which means he's always going to have syphilis. You can't get over that one. Two cases of herpes and cytomegalovirus. Now these, all of these different diseases, okay, and then he died from a severe immunodeficiency problem. And they're taking cells from this guy who had two cases of gonorrhea, one case of syphilis, uh, you know, stage four, two cases of herpes and cytomegalovirus. They're taking his cells and basing all of these tests on it. Okay, so now these are the best viral isolates that they could come up with. And this is what they're basing the test on and everything else. Does that look like a homogeneous layout? No. Different cells, different parts, different pieces. It's not accurate. That's why the tests aren't accurate. So it's not, not a homogeneous field. It's never, they've never had an appropriate viral isolate. And this is huge. Now, remember, to identify the DNA, what you got to do is have pieces of the virus put it in um, an electrophoresis machine, separate the charge, okay, and then you're going to get banding of the tissue. And this is how you identify if it's a virus. This is why, you know, the H1N1 or N1, N19 or what, whatever the virus is, this is what they're looking at. They're looking for this banding of tissue. The problem is, if you have a good viral isolate, you're going to get an appropriate and consistent banding of tissue. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Because I'm giving you all like a huge microbiology and diagnostic lesson. Okay, so now let's say you get a viral isolate like this and you go in and you drop this viral isolate in these little gradients here and you charge it up. Are you going to get consistent banding or inconsistent banding? Totally inconsistent. That's why you're HIV positive in Newport Beach, negative in Burbank. Okay. Okay. And then gosh knows what the heck it is elsewhere. Now, these are the 29 different diseases. And I know it's too small. But now remember, if you have this disease but are HIV negative, it's just a disease. The first one is multiple bacterial infection, and this applies only to children. So if you're HIV positive and you've had multiple bacteria infections and you're a child, you got AIDS diagnosis the rest of your life. Now remember, we're using this isolate to find out if you're HIV positive or negative. So it's a totally, completely, absolutely bogus test. Um, if you've had candidiasis, okay, and that's, that's a fungal infection in the lung. If you've had um, H herpes, okay, if you've had lymph lymphomia, uh, I mean, all of these different diseases, low CD4 counts, um, cervical cancer, I mean, there's too many different diseases and it's too inaccurate. Okay, does that make sense? Now, so the drug that's actually um, supposed to be taken, now AZT,